In this video we're going to be looking at summing a series and a series of a particular simple type known as a telescoping series. It's called that because the terms collapse in on themselves. The whole series in fact collapses in on itself when you add it, like a, a folding telescope or spyglass. In this case we're going to look at summing 1 over k times k plus 1. Now the first step in these is typically to do a partial fractions decomposition of the sum and, the thing you're adding. It's the same partial fractions decomposition technique that we did when we were integrating rational functions. So let's have a look at what we get. Make sure we put some English around this because that's what we should do. 1 over k into k plus 1. Well, it will be something over k plus something over k plus 1. We could put in unknown constants, cross multiply, substitute and find out what they are. But in this particular example, it's not difficult to see that in fact what we want is a 1 here and a minus 1 there. And you can check that's correct just by putting everything back over a common denominator. So clearly those are the answers. So given that that's true, what we want to do is actually cons construct the thing known as the partial sum. By definition, the limit of a series is the limit of the sequence of partial sums. So the partial sum Sn, the sum from k is 1 to n, 1 over k to k plus 1, is the sum from k is 1 to n, 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 1. So now what's going to happen, as I say, is these terms are going to cancel off. You could think of this, and you could write it out this way if you want. You could say this is uh, 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus uh, up to 1 over n minus uh, 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus up to 1 over n plus 1. So all the terms in the middle cancel off, the half and the half, the third and the third and so on. We're just left with the first term and the last term. And that's perfectly okay, you can do that if you want, and uh, for this simple case that's probably as good a way as any. But we could also do it by doing a change of variable. And it's just like an integration by substitution, you just change the sum, in this case you change the variable, I should say, you change the variable in the second sum here. So if we write this out instead of, we'll leave the first one as it is, the sum from k is 1 to n of 1 over k, minus the sum. Now, the game is to make sure I have the same thing here, and I want to change variables, so I better use another letter, I've got plenty to choose from, I'll choose j, why not? And of course, my point here is that j is going to be k plus 1. What am I going to sum from? Well, when k is 1, j is 2. And when k is n, j is n plus 1. You could have seen that directly, of course, because we're, this term here is 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus up to 1 over n plus 1. So that's what we've got. And uh, you can see we're going to just have the first term left here and the last term left here. In fact, we could here, and sometimes in other problems this is more useful, perhaps not so much here, but we can just pull off the first term which is 1 over 1, think of this thing here as everything else from 2 to n, minus, well, sum from 2 to n, 1 over j, and the last term left is 1 over n plus 1. These terms clearly cancel off because the k and the j are just dummy variables. It doesn't matter in integration, for example, if you integrate t squared from 0 to 1 dt or x squared from 0 to 1 dx, it's the same answer, same idea here. So these two terms cancel themselves off. All we're left with is the 1 and the 1 over n plus 1. And as n goes to infinity, that goes to 1. So that is the sum of that series. Remember the definition of the sum of the series is it's the limit of the sequence of partial sums. Okay, in this video we're going to be looking at summing uh, a series. It's another telescoping series. In this case 1 over k squared minus 1. Perhaps a little less obvious that this is a telescoping series than some of the examples you might have uh, looked at. But the technique is the same. We once again use partial fractions k squared minus 1, which of course is k minus 1 times k plus 1, so it's something over k plus 1 plus something over k minus 1. And 
Again, these to be constants, independent of k, is what we mean by that. And the thing to do is to work out what they are. Well, you could put an a and a b, cross multiply, substitute 1 and minus 1, and sort them out. But again, if you've been doing this for long enough, you know it's not too difficult to see exactly what you've got. In fact, what you want here is uh, get the halves around there, minus a half here and a half there. And yeah, that will cancel out if you, well, the k's will cancel out and everything else will work. Put it over a common denominator. Partial fractions are always easy to check. So if that is true, we again want to look at the partial sequence of partial sums. The sum from k is 2 to infinity. Sum from 2, of course, because the sum ends of infinity when k is 1. Uh, 1 over k squared minus 1 is, well, we'll take the factor of a half at the front. Sum from 2 to n, that should have been an n there, of course, not an infinity. 1 over k plus 1 minus 1 over k minus 1. I've got the minus on the wrong way around. It's more like it. And we can now break this up into a sum and do a shift. We'd shift, we'd make this a sum over j, where j is k minus plus 1, and that sum over l or something like that, where l is k minus 1, and cancel them off in the middle. Or we can do what I'm going to do in this case is just write the terms out and watch them all cancel. We get one half of, well, let's do the positive one first, shall we? We get one over one plus, uh, that's n, k is two, k is three, one over two, plus up to one over n minus one, in fact it's around here, minus, that's going to give me one over three plus one over four plus up to 1 over, we'll put the last three terms in. I probably should have put an extra term in here. Maybe not like that. And the third's going to cancel off here, a third here, and the quarter with a quarter, and so on. And all these terms between that one and that one are going to get cancelled. We're left with these two terms at the end and those two terms at the beginning. So what we get. 1 half of 1 plus a half, which is 3 halves, minus 1 over, sorry, yeah, minus 1 over n, minus 1 over n, plus 1. That's my formula for the partial sum. And as n goes to infinity, these two terms tend to 0, so this will tend to, well, a half of a third, 3 quarters, as n goes to infinity. And that's the sum of this series.